Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and what do you think about this seashell? Isn't it gorgeous? Look at this. It almost looks like lace along the side. It's just absolutely beautiful. So we are going to make a pendant with this seashell today. And actually I've got one, two, three, four, five pendants that I'm going to make. And if you guys just want to step into the studio here with me, and you can bead with me today, um... I'm just going to hang out with you and we'll have some fun. So if you want to make this pendant, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a shell. Now you can use any shell. Um, another shell that I have is this one that we're going to use later. And it's really pretty too. You can use flat shell for this. I'm doing some flat shell pendants in a few minutes if you want to hang around if you don't have any twisty shells. But this shell, I'm going to glue pearls in here. And I think it's going to be really pretty. So you're going to need your shell. I've painted this with um, clear nail polish because it just makes it shiny and pretty. Um, now this, I picked this shell up on the beach at Myrtle Beach. And I felt like really lucky to find this because usually you don't find them this perfect, you know. Um, so it was, you know, in pristine condition. Um, I drilled a little hole through right here. If you can see, I used this hand drill. You can get this on Amazon. They're really inexpensive, but they're perfect for drilling through shells because they're tiny and intricate and they just won't crack your shell. Okay. I need a thin gauge, not super thin, but thin enough to fit through here and big enough to go all the way around this jump ring. So I'd say that's like a 10 millimeter, I'd say. Um, I need some beads and I'm using these pearls and these really pretty, I don't know what these are, but they're really pretty. They're like crackled glass, but yet they have an AB coating on them. They're beautiful. And you're going to need a couple of um, clamshells. You're going to need a couple of crimp beads, which does not look like I have them out here. So let me get them. A couple of crimp beads. Where are they? Here they are. You're going to need a lobster claw or whatever kind of clasp you want to use on yours. And you're going to need an extender. Let me grab a couple of little crimp beads. And then you're going to need, I use E6000 um, to glue my crimps because I just feel like it makes them way more secure. Um, you don't have to do that, but um, you can. It's optional. And you're going to need a head pin to make your little bead dangle at the end of your extender if you want to do that. Okay, so let me grab a head pin because I don't have one, I don't guess. Okay, here we go. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach this jump ring because I'm going to start gluing in here and I just want this part to be done so it's out of the way and I don't have to fool with it and maybe mess up my beads later. So I'm just going to attach it here through the hole on this shell. And like I said, it needs to be kind of a thin gauge, but not so thin that it's going to come undone. You don't want that, but yeah, there we go. Closed him up, and there that is. Okay, so now let me set aside a couple beads for my dangle. We'll use those. And we're going to go ahead and glue. So grab your E6000. And this is totally up to your creative control how you want to do this. I'm just going to glue some pearls in here. So I'm going to start with this big one and I'm going to put it about right here. So just put some E6000 in there. Set the pearl in. I try to make sure that my pearl's hole is not pointing right where you can see it. Because <laughs> that kind of takes away from the effect of your pearl. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. Be generous with your glue because you don't you don't want these to come out. Okay, I'm gonna put some more here. Just a little bit down through there. And I think I will do one of these next. Just like this. And then I'll do some smaller ones. Let's see. Go ahead and do one right in here. All right. So how are you guys all doing? 
with your quarantine? Is anybody getting tired of being home? I am not <laughs> getting tired of being home. I thoroughly enjoy being home all the time. I could literally never go anywhere and be perfectly happy. And I know everybody's like, just wait. And I'm like, nope, you don't know me. You don't understand. I literally could stay home 24-7, 365 and be perfectly happy. I'm not exaggerating. Um, I love to be home. I just, I love to. I've cleaned out like four or five closets. I have done, I've planted flowers in the garden. I've just, you know, I'm just loving being home. So this is so nice for me. I mean, I'm sorry for the whole, you know, I don't want anyone to be sick. I don't mean it like that at all. Please don't take me wrong and get offended. But as far as just being home, I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I just have so much time, you know, I can do whatever I want. It's awesome. I'm going to try to put a smaller one in here. I don't really want a huge one in there. I might do this one. Yeah, I think I'll have to because, well, let me try this guy. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to, he may just fall down in there. There we go. Maybe I can set him like that till he dries. But see, I'm just making a cluster of them in here. I'm trying to make it look kind of natural and pretty. And I'm, I'm only going to use one of those. Um gold beads inside here because I'm going to use the rest of them on the chain. I just wanted to put one in here to kind of give it some continuity and tie it together. Let me grab a couple more of my smaller pearls because these, I'm using a lot of them. I'm going to put one right here. That definitely needs something there. There we go. I think these turn out really cute. I'm going to put one here. Uh, maybe one of these bigger ones. Okay. I'm not liking the look of that one there, though. I don't know why, but it's just... I don't like it there, either. So that looks pretty good for right now. So let's let that sit and dry for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and bead our chain. Now this is Coriana chain. It is for sale on my website if you like it. Um, I have platinum, which is this. I have gold and rose gold. Um, so if you want some of that, you can get it on there. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's do. I kind of need to do. Well, the small ones will work, I think. I'm going to do a small one on each side of the jump ring. Whoops. My hands are a mess because I've been gluing and I've been painting these seashells with clear nail polish. So I've got stuff all over me. <laughs> Come on, little pearl, don't tell me that you're going to give me issues going on this chain, because I really don't have time for that. Sometimes the little pearls are hard to get on. There we go. And if they are, you can cut your chain at more of an angle, like just angle the end of it with your cutters, and it usually helps. Okay, these are going to work. All right, so let's take these both down to the bottom. And the way I bead is I do one side and then the other. I just like to do it that way. That way I know that everything's even and I've got, you know, I haven't skipped a bead or anything. So there's those two. Let's go ahead and do, let me grab a couple six millimeters out of here. Let's do a six millimeter. Six millimeter. And one thing I love about this Coriana chain is you don't have to bead all the way up it. It is so elegant and pretty that you can um, you can just leave it showing, which is exactly what I will do here in a minute. You'll see. Let's go ahead and do this one. Okay. 
These little ones are, you have to kind of finagle them around. They don't want to go on there. There we go. So let me tell y'all my latest spider story while we're doing this. <laughs> I know I told you in my other video about the spider that was up in the very corner of our vaulted ceiling in the living room for months because we couldn't reach him. I told you that story. Okay, so I come in here the other day in the bead room. Now, this is the second spider this year that I've found in the bead room. Or the third. Maybe the third. But this is the second one that, like, touched me. <laughs> I... It just gives me shivers now, even thinking about it. Almost makes me sick. So, I can, you know, I'm terrified of them. If you don't know that already, I'm ter terrified of spiders. I don't know why I would love to be able to get over that fear. But, yeah, I, I'm terrified of them. <laughs> I can't even look at them. I mean, they're just, yeah, it's horrible. So, I was in here the other day, and the fan was on, the ceiling fan, and it had gotten cooler outside than it was the day before. So I reached up to grab the pull to turn the ceiling fan off. And when I did, this black fuzz floated down. And I thought it was just fuzz from the ceiling fan. You know, how it gets on there, like dust or whatever. So it floats down and lands on the bed and turns into a spider. <laughs> it was, it was not dust. And he unfolds like himself, and he wasn't huge or anything, but he was very black and kind of furry, which freaked me out. And then he starts hopping across the bed, like hopping like a rabbit. And I'm like, oh no, that is not natural. You should not be doing that. So I grabbed a paper towel and like smushed him up, grabbed him, you know, and put him in the paper towel and threw him away. But I used to not even be able to do that. I mean, I've come a long way, people. I used to be so <laughs> terrified. It didn't matter how big it was. It could be the tiniest little spider, and I could not kill it. But, you know, just the fact of, okay, Chris was at work, so he can't come and get it. He's working. So my fear of it being loose in here is way worse than my fear of killing it. <laughs> so <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> I was proud of myself, but oh my gosh. And it almost landed. I mean, it like almost landed on me. I said it touched me. It didn't really, but it almost did. It came so close. Yeah. I hate them so much. I really do. <laughs> I mean, I would pick up a snake. I'm not even scared of a snake. But a spider, mm -mm. they're just creepy. All right, so let's put our last little one on here. Come on, get on there, little guy. He doesn't want to. Let's try this one. This one will go. All right, so let's put our ends of chain together, put all our beads down. Now see, I'm only beading up this far. I'm not going to go all the way to the top of my chain because this chain is so pretty. You don't have to. Okay, now we're going to finish the ends while our pendant's still drying. So the way you finish these is I use these little clamshells like this. If you can see, there's a hole in the bottom. So you take it and you put your Corian right through it. And then you take your little crimp bead and you put him on here. You crimp him down and it doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to be inside your clamshell. No one's going to see it. So you don't have to worry about, you know, making it pretty with your crimping pliers. I take a little E6000. I put it right in here over the crimp and I close it up with my pliers and when that dries your necklace will never come apart and that's how I do these now where did my other crimp go there it is okay so we're gonna do the same thing put it up through the hole in your clam put your little crimp bead on and you guys that are new to the channel or haven't watched all my videos probably don't know, but one of the reasons that I stumble around so much with my hands and these little beads is um, I had a broken neck when I was younger. 
when I was 16, I had a car accident and broke my neck. And um, I was paralyzed from the neck down for a while. And I had to wear like braces on my hands and stuff. But um, I still have a little bit of, I guess it's nerve damage or whatever in my hands. And I can't feel in the tips of my fingers very well. So that's one reason, like, when you see me stumbling around with um, the pliers and stuff, that's one reason that I have, you know, I'm just not real graceful about it. <laughs> it's because, you know, I can't feel on the tips of my fingers, just like right there. I totally opened that jump ring and it flew away. That kind of stuff happens to me all the time. Um, I can lay my hand, the tips of my fingers on a hot stove and can't feel it can't feel it like it could burn the tips of my fingers and I'd never know it <laughs> so yeah that's one reason like when you see me having trouble with the small things or the small beads um, that's the reason but I'm very thankful because God healed me um, of this broken neck they thought well they told my parents I'd be on a ventilator the rest of my life um, but I, they watched, they took x-rays every single day, and every day, the bones had been crushed, and they looked like, um, a, they looked like just a shattered ball, like the vertebrae, where they should be like this, they were shattered apart in like a million little pieces, and they thought they were going to have to do surgery, and go in there and clean them out, um, and then they said, you know, the damage was so severe, I'd almost severed the spinal cord, and, um, so we're just attaching our, our ends here. I'm sorry. Um, I'd almost severed my spinal cord and, um, what am I trying to say? The third and fifth vertebrae were crushed. So they said there was, you know, no surgery they could do that would allow me to walk again. But they did x-rays every day and they watched those bones come back together. Every day you could see they were a little bit closer together than they had been the day before. And now if you take an x-ray of my neck, you can see the ball, the third and the fifth vertebrae, their little ball, and they have all these cracks in them. It looks like a puzzle that's been put back together. And... There's no explanation. They wrote me up in a couple of different medical journals of unexplained cases that they couldn't explain. Well, I can explain it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the hand of God. I mean, there's no other explanation for that. But I'm very, very thankful. And the only, um, the only after effects I have at this point, if you look at me, you can see the scars on my forehead. I have a scar on either side where I wore a halo just to stabilize my neck to keep any more damage from being done. I had to wear a halo and then um, the tips of my fingers I can't feel and I have restless leg syndrome really bad. Like I take two pills a day for that because um, I guess it's just nerve damage. But I'm just thankful I can walk and I can breathe and who knew that I would make jewelry <laughs> like something this intricate after um, such a terrible accident and being told that you'd never walk again and so I know I've told that story before on here but when you guys see me struggle with the the small little pieces and the um, pliers and stuff you know it's kind of funny because that one lady Suzanne had gotten so mad that day over me not being able to use the crimping pliers correctly and you know said some really um, nasty things, but you really need to realize in life, you don't know what someone has been through and you don't know the circumstances always for what's going on. Now, that being said, I could have chosen to lay down and never get better. It's a choice that you make. Um, and I chose that I did not want to live that lifestyle. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life and I think your attitude has a huge huge amount in um, your recovery in any situation like that but God had a big part in it too and so yeah just you know you never know what somebody's been through <laughs> it was easier it was easy for her to look at me and say oh she doesn't know what she's doing she's just stupid or whatever she didn't realize that 
I struggle with that because of, you know, I can't feel anything in the tips of my fingers. So, um, those pliers I did not know how to use totally that day, but I've learned since. <laughs> Thank goodness. But yeah, you just, uh, gotta show grace and mercy. The Bible says mercy always triumphs over judgment. And it's so true. In every case, mercy always triumphs. Always be merciful and graceful to people and kind. I mean, why not? All right, so here's what we have. I like it like this. I think it looks good. You could add more if you wanted to. I could put some down here. I may. I don't know. Let me add one more down there. Just down here and see if it makes it look a little like it kind of flows down. Let's add another... <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear Chris. <laughs> he's working. He's on the phone in the next room. He's like, oh, yeah, we nailed it. He got real excited about something. <laughs> I don't know what they did, but made him happy. There. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. So this will need to dry for quite a while, about, you know, a couple hours before it's very solid. And here's what this looks like. Now, this one's very long. It probably didn't need an extender chain, but I put one on anyway. But, you know, this, I don't think it's kind of bulky. You wouldn't want to wear it up near your, <laughs> you would want it to be kind of long. So, but that's what it looks like. And this is the Coriana chain and it's so elegant and pretty that I don't think it needs, um, I don't think it needs any more beads up it. I think it's beautiful. And then here we have an extender and the lobster and everything. So this is one pendant that we've done. And now, let me set this one aside so it can dry. I'm going to show you how to do a flat pendant. So we have this. Now this is again a seashell that I picked up on the beach and I've just painted it, drilled the hole. Now I used Chris's, um, his Black & Decker handheld drill to do that one because it's a thicker shell and I knew I could get through that without cracking it. So I did do that. I'm going to use some blue pearls and some blue fire polish. I like to use um, pearls on these just because they remind me of the ocean. <laughs> I'm going to use a seahorse. I've got a jump ring. I've got an extender and my Coriana chain again. Um, I've got some bead caps that I may use on this one. Depending on how I like them, I'm really picky about bead caps. So if I don't like the way they look when I put them on there, I won't use them. Lobster. Again, some um, clamshells. A couple jump rings. I've got my E6000 for the clamshells. And I need to get out a couple of crimp beads. So let me grab a couple little crimps here. Here's one. And here's the second one. A little crimps, um, a head pin for a bead dangle on the end of the extender, and I'm pretty sure that's everything. If not, we'll figure it out, and I may put some silver spacers depending. Okay, all right, so this one you kind of decide which side you want to use. I consider that kind of the back because it's cupped here, and I'm just going to hang this little sea seahorse in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers, open a jump ring, and make sure that it will fit on here. I may have to get a bigger one. I don't like to, I like to err on the side of smaller rather than bigger because I don't, I think they look funny when they're too big, but this one may not fit this. We'll see. It might. Go through there. Come on, little guy. Yeah, he's going to fit, I think, and he'll be, maybe, yeah, okay. And it, is, it doesn't have a lot of extra room, but I don't want it to have a lot of extra room. It doesn't need much, so we'll close this up. As long as it closes, you're in good shape, and it does. So then our little seahorse here, see he has a hole through here. I'm just going to hang him again with a jump ring. Let me see if this one's big enough. And this might be a little bit tricky to get through here. It's hard to get jump rings through. It bends them out of shape, and I hate to do that. So, hmm, 
We may have to wire wrap him. Don't really want to. Let's see if I have a bigger jump ring. I don't want to wire wrap him. I mean, I will if I have to, but ugh. yeah, this one will work. I'd rather do this than wire wrap him. I really, really would. Okay. Yeah, the bigger jump ring works. It's big, but I think it'll be okay. So let's slide it through there. We'll see how it looks. If it looks freakish, then we'll <laughs> we'll do something. But I think it's okay. It almost makes him look like he's got a little bridle on, <laughs> like a real horse. <laughs> okay, <coughs> let's go with that for now. If it looks crazy, we'll change it. Okay, so then we're going to just slide our Coriana chain through here. And we're going to beat up the sides with this, these beautiful, got some beautiful blue pearls and some beautiful blue fire polish. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to start with the fire polish, I think, on either side. Just like this. And let's try a bead cap. Like I said, I'm super picky about bead caps. I don't like them to make the bead look like it has a hat on. <laughs> I don't know any other way to say it. That's all the way I can explain it. But yeah, that looks okay. I like that. I'm just real picky about them. So we'll go ahead and put this one on. Whoops. And this one through. Okay. I'm going to do another pearl. Not with bead caps, just by itself. This one's pretty. I really like the uh, light blue. Okay, and then another fire polish. Okay, so I saw this thing on the internet, and it, you guys have probably all seen it already. I don't get on Facebook very often. Um, <clears throat> Facebook just gets on my nerves. <laughs> it really does. I get on there and post my jewelry. I have a jewelry page on there. It's a bead on a wire jewelry, and I get on there and I'll post pictures sometimes or post something for sale or whatever, but I just don't get on Facebook a whole lot. Um, like not, I get on the messenger part because I have some people that message me on there, but I don't like just scroll through the news feed hardly ever. It just gets on my nerves. I don't know. People on there are crazy and people will say things, whoops, people will say things on Facebook that they would never say in person. I just think Facebook makes people rude. <laughs> um, so I don't get on there very much, needless to say, but anyway, I did see something the other day that my, um, cousin had posted and it said, I think, can we, um, re, can we delete and reinstall 2020? I think it has a virus. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. Not to make fun of the coronavirus. I don't mean it that way. But you know what? We've got to find some kind of joy in stuff sometimes. So, but I thought that was funny. Can we delete and reinstall, <laughs> um, 2020? Because we think it has a virus. Okay. So here we have this. I think this looks really good. Um, I even like the little horse hanging like he is with that jump ring. It makes him look like he's got a bridle on. And so, I think I might put a couple little silver spacers on the end here just to kind of give it a little finishing look. I like to do this sometimes. I just think it makes it look... Oops, that one's littler. I was trying to find a bigger... That one works. I just think it makes it look finished. So we'll put that one on. And this one on. There they are. 
and then we'll finish our necklace our ends so we, again we take our clam and stick this right through it put your crimp on crimp him down Scoot this up, and we're going to use our E6000. There's my little toothpick. It's kind of drying in the end of my tube here now. I need to get the dry glue off. Okay, here we go. Just like this. Close it up. Same thing on the other side. And stick this one in here. I was talking to my boys the other day, and they're so funny. Logan is 22, and Landon is 18, and they're so different. They're like, I don't know that they even, I mean, I know they came from the same two parents, but Lord, they're totally different children. And Landon is so social. Like, he just, he has a ton of friends. He loves to get out. He loves to do things. And so, this quarantine is, like, killing him. He can't hardly stand it. Logan, on the other hand, is like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. He's like me. He's like, <laughs> yeah, so he's totally enjoying the quarantine, you know. <laughs> Again, not that we want anyone to be sick. It's not about that. But, yeah, he's, like, really liking being home and <laughs> not having anything to, you know, not having to go any place or have any responsibilities, really. You know, he got laid off from work, too. And uh, Landon, on the other hand, is about to lose his mind. He's like, Dad won't let me go anywhere. <laughs> I said, well, honey, it's really not Dad. It's, <laughs> you know, the they've told us not to go anywhere but you know I could go I could at least go over to so-and-so's house I'm like no you really shouldn't <laughs> but yeah it's funny how different they are <laughs> okay so we've got those on now let's make a bead dangle I'm just gonna do one of each little bead here just like that <coughs> excuse me my allergies have Really been bugging me. Whoops. North Carolina has a lot of flowers and a lot of trees and a lot of pollen. And it's getting the best of me. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to roll our loop back here. Our little dangle. And some people like to slip it on, on the chain right now, like before they completely close their loop. I don't like to do that because I like to get my loop good and, I don't know, rounded and just make it look good and close it. And I have trouble doing that if I've got the chain in the way. So I'd rather just open the link on the chain after I make the bead dangle. And I know that a lot of people are like, you don't have to do that. You can just, I know, I can just put it on as I'm making it, but... To me, this is easier. <laughs> Even though it's an extra step, it's easier. Okay? So there you have it. And you can close it up here. And you've got a cute little bead dangle. And a beautiful little pendant with this little seahorse on here. I think it's absolutely adorable. I'm tempted. I kind of, I like the the jump ring but I'm actually tempted to take this jump ring off and glue the seahorse to the shell let me look and see what that would look like I kind of do like the jump ring on there but I kind of don't and I think I'm gonna do that I think I'm just gonna glue him on here I think that will look better let me just Slather him up with some glue. Okay. 
So let's glue him on like this. And let me look for a very tiny blue or might you just use clear. Here's a teeny clear pointed back chaton. And I'm going to use that right here in this hole. Just so it doesn't look like he has a hole in him. He can have a little bling instead. Okay. So there we have it. And I like that better. I think that looks better. So there it is. And that is our second pendant. Okay. And I love that. That turned out really cute. All right. So now let's move this up here. That's two different kinds. Let's do one with this one, this kind of shell. <coughs> Excuse me, it's getting to me all this talking. Okay, so I have this shell and I have all these black beads. <laughs> and I have this little black heart charm and I thought it would be really cute hanging in there. And some of these black beads, I've got bead caps and basically just the same stuff as I used with the other necklaces and extender chains and Coriana, just the whole same bit. Okay, and I've got this little turtle, where'd it go? I had a little turtle charm, yeah, that I may, little turtle bead I may hang from there. So what we're going to do with this one is we need to put a head pin or an eye pin through here. Let me grab an eye pin. Okay. We're just going to stick our eye pin through and make sure that it does not go through the hole. And I actually may stick a small silver bead on just to make sure that it's not going to go through the hole. Because that would be really bad. Okay. Yeah, that's better and it looks more finished too. Okay. So we're just going to take the eye pin and we're going to make a loop right here at the top. Just a normal, normal loop. Do I want to do that or, do, <coughs> excuse me, do I want to put a bead on here? I mean, let's, let me do this. <coughs> I think I want to put a bead on here. Just a little pearl. Yeah, I think I like that better. Let's do that. Actually, I may put some bead caps on too. This is how I do it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I have to kind of look at things sometimes and think. Yeah, let's put some bead caps on there. That'd be cute. Okay, so there we have it. Now we're going to make our loop. So we'll just bend 90 degrees. <coughs> Cut your Oh goodness, I may have to go get some water and roll this back. <clears throat> okay, there we go, just like that. <laughs> I laid it right down, didn't I? There we go, stand it up. Okay, so there's our little loop, and we've got our little shell here. Now, I'm going to make, and I'm going to use um, just a small head pin, and I'm going to make this little turtle a dangle. Okay, so we want this to be, we don't want a big loop here, we want it to be tiny. I really need to get like some precision um, chain nose pliers. I don't have any precision ones, I just have, but I'd like to have some of those really tiny ones that make the little, little, little loops. There we go. Make sure it's closed up good. So there's our little turtle. Oh, he's cute. Okay, so we're going to take this charm. And we're going to go ahead and open up this eye pin right here. Hang the charm in there. Just like that. Close it back up. Get that bead out of the way. Right there. 
Okay, now I don't want it to be backwards. There we go. I should have already hung this on here, apparently, but I didn't think about that. Now it's going to be really hard, but I'll get it. Okay, scoot that bead up. Get up there, out of the way. You are being very difficult. Yes, you are. You're being very difficult. Improvise, people. <laughs> Use anything that you need to <laughs> to get your jewelry made. Good lord, why did I not think of this already, but I did not. Okay, let me try to close that up a little so that bead will stay out of the way. There we go. All right, tag on. That was difficult. Okay, there it is. <laughs> now, we're going to hang our little turtle from it, and let's see, I'm going to hang him with a small jump ring. No, maybe I'm not. <clears throat> I don't know if he'll fit on there. He's got a small, small loop. Let's see. If he won't, I can hang him with a jump ring, but I'd kind of like him just to go on here. He will, I think. Apparently, I need some precision chain those pliers as well. Okay, there we go. Look, that's cute. Okay, so we got our little turtle, our little heart, and our beautiful shell. Okay, now we're going to put some Coriana chain on here. That was difficult, man. Difficult. Put our Coriana chain on. Okay. Now this one's long. Let me hold this up. This does not need to be this long. Let me cut this chain. I don't lie, but I measured it quite that long, but I don't want it that long, so let me cut it. Okay, that's better. Okay. Now, we're going to bead each side of this. And I think I'm going to do small black beads down at the bottom. And I like these square beads. I don't know where. I think they came from Michael's. But they kind of have the same pattern in them as the heart. Sort of. Not totally, but similar. So I really liked them. I thought they were very cool. I want to use them on this. And I'll probably make a pair of earrings to go with this as well. I don't have any more of these heart charms. That would have been really cute to dangle. But I can use these beads. And the little turtle. I have some more turtles. So I could make little earrings out of that. <clears throat> okay, let's do a bead cap. And these kind of medium-sized ones, which I think this is like a 10 millimeter, probably. Somebody said something on the, um, I was doing the, oops, sorry, doing the, um, curated bead box haul, and they said they only use 4 millimeter and 6 millimeter beads, and I can't imagine only using 4 and 6 millimeter. I, um, I think these right here are 10. I love to vary the sides of my, sizes of my beads. But, to each his own. I mean, you can do it however you want, but I like to have that variety in there. A little bit more. Uh, <coughs> try to find. Here we go. There's a bright one. I'm running out of bright silver spacer beads that are um, a little bit bigger. I've got a teeny tiny size here, but I was kind of liking this. I don't know what size this is. Two millimeter maybe? But I like it. I may have to get on bargain bead box and see if they have any. Okay. There we go. Let's look 
looking good. Let's do another one of these. Actually, let's do a six, a couple six millimeters without bead caps, just the six millimeter. Six millimeter. Okay, now we'll do a couple more of these square beads. Okay, let's see what we got so far. So far, that's what we've got. I think it's turning out really cute. I'm going to do a couple more six millimeter. Okay, one more. I don't know if I want to go up too much more than that. I probably will do a couple more. <clears throat> I've got to get pictures taken and get stuff up on my website. I'm telling you guys, I, <laughs> out of everything I do, I think that is my least favorite thing in the whole world <laughs> to do. I wish I had a kid here that I could hire to do it for me. But like I said, mine are in West Virginia. And, uh, they are not available, but, um, goodness, I hate taking the pictures, and you take the pictures, you upload them to the computer, then you download the zip file, then you have to resize all the pictures, then you have to upload them to your website, then you have to write all the descriptions, and I like to put measurements and stuff, so I'm kind of thorough about it, but, oh. I just really, <laughs> it is not my favorite thing. I'd much rather be in here making jewelry. <laughs> I need to hire some admin staff, don't I? So I can <laughs> just create and let somebody else do that stuff that I hate doing. Okay, here's our current beads. We're going to put the lobster on. Um, Where is it? Here it is. Not lobster, but, well, I guess we are going to put the lobster on, but this is the clam. Okay. Put that on there, and we do them just like we did the other ones. So this is three different shapes of shells that you can <clears throat> make into pendants. And I think I said earlier, or maybe I said it in the earring video, I'm not sure, but was that a crimp bead or was that a seed bead? <laughs> it's not crimping very well. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Huh. Um, <clears throat> I think I said in one of my earlier videos that, or maybe it was this one. It's all running together at this point. But, um... Dollar Tree sells seashells, and they are really pretty, and you get a whole big bunch for a dollar, so, you know, if you can't find seashells on your own, like you can't go out to the beach, um, definitely try Dollar Tree. Oh, I'm so sorry. Goodness, that was a big hit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this camera's got this arm thing. It's like a snaky little arm, and it sticks out and holds it to a clip that I actually have up there, up above me, um, but the arm, I keep hitting the arm and I can't get it out of the way enough to where I don't hit it, so I'm not actually hitting the camera part, I'm hitting the arm <laughs> of the thing that's holding it. <clears throat> but I am sorry, because I know that that's not pleasant for you all. Okay. Close this one up. Just like that. All right, now let's make the bead dangle for our extender. And I'm just going to use, let's see, what do I have here? I'll use this six millimeter bead. I don't want to do anything too heavy on it and maybe a little silver spacer. That'll work. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make an official video later asking you guys what you think, but I'll throw it in here too. I'm thinking of getting some products to sell <clears throat> on my website, like not products as in jewelry, but jewelry making supplies. Like, um, you know, I don't know. I've been, I've put the Coriana chain up on there and I thought, well, 
I mean, I could do, I could do other things too, <clears throat> but I kind of wondered, and wanted to ask you guys, and like I said, I'm going to do a video later, but if you want to comment here as well, what are some things that you would like for me to sell on the website? Like, um, would you like to see bicones on there or I've already got the Coriana chain? Like what kinds of things would you like to see on there? Um, and I was just going to ask that. I don't know. I mean, it's might be something that I would want to do. I can't quite decide <laughs> if I totally do or not, but I don't know. I just thought about it. So, especially if I continue to be <clears throat> laid off from work, because the majority of people that go to my website make their own jewelry. They don't really need to buy jewelry from me. They can just make it, but <clears throat> they might appreciate being able to buy the supplies. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would be interested to hear. Like I said, I'm going to do a video later, but I've got to fix my hair first <laughs> before I get on camera. I just washed it this morning and let it go. And so, yeah, it's got to have some maintenance before I put myself out there for the world to see. <laughs> That's got to happen. <clears throat> so here we go. Whoops. I'm going to put this lobster on and we've got a little, um, I have a little black a little tiny black um, lobster. My friend Catherine was looking for 14 or 16 millimeter black lobster clasps, and all we can find are these small ones, but I know they make them. I just can't seem to find them. I think AliExpress might have them. Okay, so here we have it. So that's a very cute little pendant, too. And here's the extender and the dangle. So here's our three styles of pendant. We've got this one. We've got this one, which is really long. I hope it's not too long, but it may be. Um, that one. And, yeah, I was like, I know I made another one. Where'd it go? We've got this little seahorse. So th this shows you three ways that you can use shells. You can use the flat shell. You can use the twisty shell. And you can use the bowl-shaped little shell. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoyed making it. I love working with the seashells. It's so much fun. But now I have got to bite the bullet and go outside and take pictures and upload things. <laughs> so my fun has ended for today. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you like this video and you want to see more of these types of videos, like it and subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, and I... Um, I guess, I don't know what's going to happen with me in work, but it looks like I may be home for a while, so I'm going to be making a lot of videos. So if you guys want to see it and you want to be able, you know, want me to keep being able to put content out there, please like the videos and subscribe. Um, tell your friends, maybe you've got a jewelry making friend that would want to like um, the videos and subscribe because um, this is looks like it's going to have to kind of be the living for me for a little while. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I need all the support I can get from you guys, so it doesn't cost anything to subscribe and like. And if you want to visit the website, if you're looking for Coriana Chain, um, it is up on the website in three different colors right now. And let me know what you think about um, me selling some jewelry making supplies on the website. Do you think is that something you guys would be interested in me doing? Um, or do you guys already have places that you order from and you're just setting those and you probably wouldn't be interested? So just let me know what you think. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.